Hey, you ever heard of the Cypher System? No, what's that? It's a tabletop role-playing game. Want to play? Is it hard to learn? Not at all. Let me show you. So, Ancient, we all play with new players from time to time. Yeah, and a table full of new players is a lot of fun. Um, but there's some things you really need to keep in mind when you're playing with new players. Yeah, first off, there's two types of new players. There's the new player who's never played a tabletop RPG before. And then there's the new player that came from another system and <laughs> hasn't played Cypher System. I mean, we all know the elephant in the room. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, those players are another different thing compared to what we're going to talk about now. Yeah, we could do a whole 30-minute video on that. So we won't even touch on that. Um, this is specifically for new players who've never played a RPG before. Yep, and we're going to be talking about how to make them comfortable and, you know, how to really encourage them to, you know, participate in the game and not really make them feel uncomfortable about it because that's a really big thing for new players is their comfortability at the table. Yeah, I mean, one of the tips or technique as a GM that I would use when I know I have a new player is, first off, I'm going to sit them next to an experienced player. I'm going to sit them next to someone that knows the rules, so if they have a question, they don't have to ask the entire group and feel uncomfortable or feel awkward. They can ask this one specific person and say, hey, what's the rule for this, or what do I roll here? And um, it, it'll make the, one, it'll make the game run smoother, and two, it'll make that person feel less awkward to the entire group. For sure, and having that person, that experienced player sitting next to that new player, it's almost like having a mini mentor. Yeah, uh, They absolutely. don't have, again, what Anthony said, they don't have to worry about bothering the GM, bothering the other player mm -hmm. at the table. They can just quickly decide like, hey, you know, what's the ruling on this? You know, what what does my character do in this aspect? And it's just, it, it's awesome because, you know, a lot of people, new players might feel awkward interrupting in game like, hey, I don't wanna barge in. And in this case, they don't have to stop the game. They just ask the person that's sitting next to them. I mean, another tip I would give is have a mini session zero before you even actually have them sit down on at the table. Definitely. I mean, definitely. introduce the concept of an X card. You know, is are there any triggers? Is there anything you dislike? Anything you like? Do you like combat? Do you like a more narrative style story? Do you like, you know, do you like to have? say funny voices you know do, do you like to act out your character do you not like to act out your character and uh, you definitely got to be sure that um also when you do talk about the narrative the setting or whatever have you uh you should bring up anything that could potentially uh trigger someone or you know make them feel awkward at the table like maybe a graphic description of a scene like maybe someone got cut or wounded in some way and you yeah. You know, I you know it particularly happens in horror games. You know, where a killer is on the loose or something, and he's killing people. And um, you <laughs> like know, like your one shot. <laughs> exactly. In my in my horror one shot, you know, we had a killer in the woods, and before the game, my session zero with my new players, I asked them, you know, are you comfortable with me describing a killer in a certain way? You know, how bloody can I get? How bloody should I stay away from? And what have you. And that makes sure that people are always comfortable. No yeah. one at the table had any issue with anything, so I was I had free reign to say whatever. But um, it's the point. It's not even that's not even the point. The point is asking. Exactly. You know, as long as you're upfront, and if they did have a problem, you know, you could change your narrative. Yeah, you you don't have to include every little yeah. graphic thing. Like it's so easy to exclude one little bit to make that player comfortable, and that's so important. Making sure that these new players are comfortable because. If they're not super comfortable in the setting and the surroundings that their characters are in, that the player themselves are not going to be comfortable acting out for the character because it's so awkward for them. I, I think another important tip is, or something to remember when you're GMing for new players, is not only are you the GM, you're basically teaching the rules as well. So, you know, you're playing two jobs. You're the GM and the teacher. So, in the case of Cypher System, remind them that they have effort you know, that they could apply effort to a role. Or remind them that edge subtracts one point from the effort if you're playing tier one or what have you. Those those little things, if you state it beforehand, they they won't feel like having the need to have to ask if you, you just know, say it. if you constantly remind them early on in the game. And Cypher system isn't complicated enough of a system where they won't pick it up, you know, maybe after two or three times you, you reminding them. So mid session you probably don't even have to do that anymore because th they'll see, you know, 
you explained it once or twice and then they'll pick it up and that's the uh the true elegance of the cypher system is that you can take a new player who's never played a role-playing game never doesn't really know how dice work or anything and they can sit down at the table and you can just like effort all that yeah. stuff can be described while we're playing and even new players who've never done this before, it's very easy to say, hey, don't forget, you can use effort. And there's not too many specific mechanics yeah. to mention, so they're not overwhelmed. Yes. Yeah, Cypher System is almost tailor-made for new players, if you really think about it. You know, it's there's basically like two core mechanics you have to know. So once you teach them those two core mechanics, you're really not doing much teaching anyway. You know, you know w once they figure out, you know, the edge, effort, and how to set a difficulty and what they're rolling to, you know, that's pretty much it. It's cut and dry. And then after that, once, you know, you get into that flow of, you know, the rule set, then it's more about getting them into the role-playing aspect. Yeah. And that can also be quite challenging for new players because, you know, they don't want to step on people's toes. Yeah. They don't, you know... Also, not... very important, do not force them. Never force a new player in the spotlight if he doesn't want it. For sure. Th that should be something that happens gradually. M maybe have one of the more experienced players have the spotlight for a little bit. So let them see how it is to role play your character. I, I feel like a, a lot of times uh, newer players, they really don't feel comfortable or know how to take the spotlight. You know, not every not everybody wants to do a two minute monologue about the, you know about the cat. I know you like to, <laughs> but not, not everyone does. You know, so you shouldn't force it on them. For sure. And then yeah. again, this harks back to what we said before about having the experienced player at the table, um, coming at, to the table knowing that you have one experienced player, one new player. You can, as the GM set up a scene where the experienced player takes the spotlight and that again showcases exactly what not should go on but how people go about it and seeing an example is an especially a first-hand example of it yeah. live in a game puts people at a little more of a comfort level because yeah. um they're like um seeing it happen live in front of them and it's, yeah. and you see and you see when you see something in person it kind of makes it a little more easy for you to imitate it yeah absolutely and then, you know, maybe once or twice during mid-game or towards the end of the game, at least give them an opportunity to have the spotlight. And, I mean, you could quickly tell. Everyone knows, especially <laughs> playing in person, you know when someone's uncomfortable. For sure. So, so as a GM, you offer the spotlight, and if you see that they're having problems with it, you quickly move on to a, a different player, but always make it seem like they had some resolution towards this their little scene you know just don't cut them off but it, there's a lot of ways of doing that without making them feel uncomfortable it shouldn't be a problem i hope this video helps you on your future games with new players whether you agree with us or disagree there's a comment section down below and don't forget to like share and subscribe and new players and old players alike should definitely join the cypher unlimited discord there's going to be a link down below and don't forget fudge the rules and just have fun <laughs> we out